Hey there everyone, it's Steve with Do-It-Yourself Telecom and I've got one of these self-install cable uh, kits. So I ordered cable TV from my provider, which is Charter, um, I'm sorry, Spectrum. And uh, you know, they, they send you a video, they send you some instructions and you know, there's my outlet right there. What they don't really bother to tell you though is that what if the outlet, that little cable jack right there on the wall, what if it's not active? What if it's not hot? I mean, they tell you how to how to hook up the box, connect the cables, you know, put the HDMI cable in the back of the TV, etc. But I discovered that my jack or my, my cable outlet was not active. So what I did is I went out to the side of the house and I found the junction box and I show you in this video how I'm able to use a toner and tone probe to trace down the cables I need and get those connected to the splitter um, and so that they're hot so that when I do put this box on there, I get some signal. So if you're currently suffering with a situation where you're trying to get this box to work and it doesn't seem to be coming online, it could be that that outlet is not hot. Okay, let's go take a look. So I just got cable turned on in this house and I opened the box and this is the mess I find. And so what I've done is because nothing is labeled, what the number one thing you got to find is where's the cable coming off the street or from the underground. So ignore this big mess and just look for what's coming in from the street. And it looks like I've got two things coming in off the street. So there's this. And then there's another one here that's cut, which makes me wonder if maybe that went bad and they replaced it with this. Okay, so that's going to be my starting point. This is going to be what the cable company is delivering to me. So everything else, what I'm going to do is disconnect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a toner to tone out all these individual cables. Well, maybe not all of them, but at least the ones I need. But the trick to doing that is to disconnect everything and then one by one identify them and put little markers on them and then connect them as needed. So that's what I'm going to do next. And I'll show you that toner and how I'm doing that. All right, so in order for me to isolate these individual cable drops and connect the ones I need and not connect the ones I don't need, um, I'm using one of my telecom toners and probes. And so what I did, and I'm sure there's a tool just for this, and I'd be happy for you uh, cable types to leave me a comment about it. But since I don't have that, what I did is I stuck a paper clip into the center uh, of, the, uh, of the outlet, and then I put another one of the alligator clips from my tone probe on the, uh, on the jack or, you know, the metal, the metal uh, threads. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm toning both the tip and the ring of the cable. Um, I apologize. I don't know what you guys call that in cable terms. And so that's what's making a tone through the wire and that will allow me to isolate it down at the box. All right. So I've got everything disconnected, which means all the cables coming out of the house, cables coming from the ground, everything's disconnected. And the reason I did that is in order to identify the cable I need with the toner, I need everything to be disconnected. Otherwise, the tonering, the tone, which I'll show you in a minute, just bleeds all over the place. You'll never figure it out. So now with the tone probe, and if you're not familiar with this toner tone probe thing, I'll, I'll leave you the link so you can get a primer on that real quick. But with the tone probe, I'm looking for the one making noise. There it is right there. See how when I get close to it, it makes that... All right, so that's telling me that's the one that I've got the toner on. All right, so the toner I showed you a minute ago inside the outlet, that's the one right there. So that tells me that that's my master guest room that I want. And so that's one of the ones. So I'm going to take and put a piece of tape on that so I know which one I'm dealing with. And then I can reconnect that to the cable that came from the street. Um, except I've got to do a couple more, so I'll put a splitter in. But do you see what I'm doing? I'm isolating. I'm, I'm basically finding one at a time the cable I need with the toner, labeling it. Then I can go back and connect the cable from the street to the cables where I need the service, like that one right there. Okay? All right, so I was able to successfully identify my two. I've got the master bedroom and do yourself a favor and mark them somehow. Otherwise you don't have to play this game twice. So I got the master bedroom and I got the guest room. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the two-way splitter or three-way or four-way, depending on how many you need. And I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put 
this end on the cable that comes from the street right here. And then obviously these two will then connect to the two cables that I just found. And then I'll have service feeding my, uh, my two desired bedrooms. Something else I want, something else I wanted to show you that, um, you may or may not have this, but mine actually had a grounding, uh, I guess it's like a surge protection lug of sorts in there. So it's just a coupler. So, so if you have that, use it. If you don't, you know, then, then, then obviously you, you don't have it, you can't use it. But what that does is, is the cable from the street comes in one side and goes into this coupler, which is then grounded. And then it comes out the other side with like a short little piece right here, which I'll then connect to the splitter, which feeds those, uh, those two bedrooms that I identified. Another thing that's important is that when you're working with the wires and you're trying to kind of put them all back in the box, don't kink the wires. Ideally, coax cable needs to have a wide sweep. So see how I've got like a, like a nice round bend in there. There's a round bend in there. You don't ever want to fold these over or pinch these. You want these to have nice wide sweeps um, when they turn corners like that. Got my box, got my box hooked up. Got my HDMI cable plugged in from the back of the box into HDMI one on the TV. And I'm gonna apply power. And if my cable jack is hot, then I should start seeing some activity on the screen. All right, so now I'm getting the firmware upgrade in progress. So that's a good sign because that means that it's communicating um, with the central office or whatever you call it in the cable TV business. And that means I've got a connection. So that pretty much wraps it up. I was able to successfully get my outlet heated up and connected and I'm downloading the firmware. So I should be able to start getting some channel surfing going on pretty soon. I hope you have found this helpful. If you did, give me a like and please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, thanks for watching.